I mean, they start with uh, looking at at a plastic spider, and then they take this plastic spider in the hand, to, in the hand and then they look at a life spider, and then they touch the life spider, and then they take the life spider in the hand, and then they do you want to know? <laughs> then they get the uh, life spider here. Okay, so this three, this is the end. Uh, so we can do something like uh, renewal sessions. I don't know how to talk, to call it. Yeah. Uh, when, if it's true that, that the reactivation of extinction memory, reward, memory works, so we need to do something like renewal. And the new data show that uh, stress or glucocorticoids that uh, that they might uh, strengthen the uh, the uh, building of the extinction memory, the consolidation of extinction memory. So there are two studies on people with people uh, who showed that stress uh, induced after the extinction uh, training uh, works better uh, than without stress. This is probably mediated by glucocorticoids, uh, but we need to know how to do it. I can't, actually I cannot imagine how to do it in therapy uh, still, but if it works, we need to do it actually. But we don't know uh, at what time we need to, uh, to get this, uh, to give this stress, because uh, there are some uh, data that shows uh, that it probably might, must be uh, induced uh, shortly after the extinction training. So that the extinction memory consolidation is better, better. Okay. So we have we had this selective attention to uh, to phobic stimuli. We know that there is a increased amygdala activation. That probably uh, we know that the main role in the building of extinction memory plays. Uh, the frontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, and it stops uh, the activation of amygdala. But we don't know whether. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, this is the, the direction I showed you how the amygdala is. Uh, um, uh, how, what is the impact of the amygdala on the, of the visual on the visual cortex? And what is the impact of the frontal, uh, prefrontal uh, uh, cortex on the amygdala after the extinction training? There are two hypotheses actually that this is a direct uh, inhibition, or that the uh, prefrontal cortex does not inhib inhibit the amygdala directly, uh, because there are some studies who showed that the amygdala is still act active after the extinction training. But the amygdala does not send uh, the information to other parts of the, of the brain. So it, it's probably also that, that the uh, inhibition uh, is working on, like on this, in this direction. Okay. Okay. So, what we know from uh, the studies on, uh, on anxiety disorders and for psychotherapy. So first of all, you don't you don't need to try to change attention. This is it does not work. You need to directly uh, change emotion, fear, and you need to be careful uh, not to make fear conditioning during the therapy or. Uh, you need to be careful uh, with this long-lasting sensitization of we don't know, probably the fear secret uh, because otherwise you will get generalization of phobias you can get a new uh, fear conditioning you will get an avoidance and it's not good for the therapy uh, you might probably use the approach system uh, if we know that the avoidance approach they don't work together uh, we can use this approach system it's a very 
good tool, but as I said, it's not really investigated. Mm. Uh, and you need to try to reduce the aversive memories after the session, after the exposure. By, uh, I didn't tell it, but uh, stress and glucocorticoids may play also a role in uh, reducing these aversive memories after uh, the exposure. And uh, at the same time, they might intensify uh, the uh, extinction memory consolidation, as I said. Okay, I would like to thank the, the team I was working with, uh, my, my supervisor and boss, Alfons Hamm, and my friends, uh, Christiane Meltzig, uh, Matthias Weimar, Heino Mormann. It was all, uh, the, all the studies were um, way down in the uh, University of Greifswald. Thank you very much for your attention. and we are waiting for your questions. Um, could you remind us of how big was the group that you conducted this very interesting experiment on? Which one? Uh, the group of spider phobics. Uh, it was also uh, always like I'm mean, the group uh, with the cover story. These were uh, I think 25, 25 spider phobics and 25 contrast because we need need needed to split it on before and after. So some people saw uh, saw that this, these two conditions safe and and non threat condition before. A spider condition and some people saw it after because it was counterbalanced. So we really needed a lot of uh, a lot of people. So we we take it was like 25 or 26 per group. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, was there any uh, relaxation of the amplitude before? Uh, yeah, after uh, seeing the spider picture, for example. Uh, what do you mean, relaxation of the amplitude? I mean the slope of the amplitude. Was was there any change between the spider phobics and uh, the control group? I think I've spotted something like this on one. Okay. Interesting. Uh -huh. Where was it? You mean this? Oh. This one? Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe even uh, earlier. Uh, is if there was any difference uh, in yeah yeah in this this here mm -hmm. yeah uh, what what part you mean uh, the you see that this is going uh, after the exposure to the picture yeah. this is going downhill really quickly yeah uh, yeah later on and relaxation you mean the negative uh, amplitude yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably it is. It's like uh, expectation, probably. No, no, no. I mean, um, what, it, it went uphill, right? When, here. when the, yeah, and then it goes downhill. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dramatically. Uh, and compared to the controls group, it's it goes different. Yes. Uh, that is a good does question. it does it mean anything or is uh, just? Wait a minute. This is in the time of uh, already studying something like P two. Uh, these are all. I don't know. I, I, yeah. It might be a. It would be a main group effect, and the something like P two or selective negativity. This is a good question, but uh, it's you're right. There is a there is a difference, but I don't know whether there are some data about the P two about a general difference in the P2, uh, but the P2 here, parietal, but it might be like you know, opposite way around here. It might have to do something like with this, but I'm not very sure. Do you have some idea? Not really, no. I was wondering. It might, be, it might have something to do with the, with the increased P2. If the P2 is increased here, uh, it might cause Wait a minute, it would be like, 
might be also increased. It would be increased in spider focus here, so it would be decreased here. So it might have something to do because this is the time window you won't expect, you still won't expect any uh, uh, picture specific differences here. So this, this, this is a, uh, probably a main group effect. So there, there are no, no picture specific differences in mm -hmm. 200 milliseconds. I mean, it starts already, but you still cannot, I, this is not a graph I can show you any specific differences. Yeah, it might have something to do with the, with the increased P2, but I need to show, I need to look at Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, do you have some data for uh, how does it look in people after a successful therapy? Yeah, there are, uh, I mean, we didn't manage to do this, such experiment. Uh, but there are, I mean, this is not very complicated actually. Eight, eight hours of exposure therapy. Okay, but there are data. data, uh, And the data I showed you with uh, about this uh, frontal loop uh, in inhibi inhibitory uh, activation into amygdala, uh, these are therapy data actually. These are exposure uh, data, uh, exposure therapy data. I mean, they looked uh, before the therapy and after exposure, uh, and uh, this is a this is a sta stable result. That they get this uh, increased frontal prefrontal activation after exposure therapy, which is probably inhibiting uh, the amygdala or uh, the connections of amygdala. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there more questions? Not. Then thank you very much once again. Thank you.